Before we dive into structures, I want to give you one more overview video to really emphasize um, some of the different, the, why we really have the anatomy we have. Um, so first, let's basically what, what we need to have happen is we need to get oxygen into the bloodstream to be circulated and carbon dioxide needs to go out. So in this diagram here, if I've got my cells, tissues, the cells of my tissues over here, these are some cells, um, they're producing carbon dioxide, we've got to get that out, we've got to get them oxygen. Really what we need for that, oh, that's ugly, is diffusion. So we've got these gases can just diffuse across. What is this thing? A respiratory membrane. Well, we're big humans. Um, we need a big respiratory membrane to have a lot of diffusion occur. So that's where the lungs come in. We're gonna have the lungs have a high surface area that allow for a lot of gases to pass across them. So we'll see, we'll see that feature. Ventilation, remember that other, um, well, we'll do both ways here. That first step is constantly refreshing that respiratory membrane so that fresh gases are um, hitting that respiratory membrane. So remember our, our steps from the previous video, pulmonary ventilation, diffusion, gas transport, internal respiration. Nice, huh? So the whole idea of having lungs is, is based on the idea of, of surface area. We need to um, have something with high surface area so that this diffusion can, can occur. And I know this is a human anatomy physiology class, but I like you to be, think about why, a little bit about why we have these structures. So some organisms, so why am I showing you these two, these two other organisms here? Um, this is showing two organisms that can get by primarily with just diffusion. They can maintain adequate gas um, exchange and gas transport when, with just diffusion across the skin. This one has a very... Um, high surface area to volume. So does this one, but a different mechanism, all these flaps of skin. So other features these organisms have are thin skin, moist skin, and like I already said, a high surface area to volume ratio to, to um, facilitate high levels of diffusion. Well, larger animals can't do this. A human has a, that's, that's actually, no, that this, if humans are more like this, <laughs> we're not sticks. Um, we have got a bunch of muscle and bone and organs in there. This is an awful human, but it does fit my point. The surface area of this organism is much lower compared to the volume. So we can't rely on diffusion across the skin, along with the fact that our skin has different features as well that makes it thicker. So we need a, resp a special respiratory organ to help us obtain um, oxygen and get rid of carbon dioxide. Different organisms have different mechanisms of this. Um, there's gills are one example of ways to increase surface area. I'm not going to go into details besides to, I, to say the same idea of gills is what humans have. Inside the lungs, there are these alveoli. Um, it's also shown here that dramatically increase surface area and diffusion occurs here. That's really what matters. And then what features do these structures have? Um, they're gonna have high surface area. We just said there's gonna be a lot of them. There's gonna be branching that occurs before we get to the final, these alveoli. Um, so there's 150 
million about alveoli, one trachea. <laughs> they're going to be thin, so simple squamous epithelium, and they're going to be moist. And we'll look at why this matters, the moisture for um, diffusion of gases into liquids versus air. So a little touch of comparative anatomy there to really make you think about why we've got these respiratory organs. Um, we're gonna come back to alveoli and look at gas exchange across here. So that's where you're gonna see what happens within these organs. <laughs> 